All right, this is Paris. I have been spending all day at the Flight Simulator 2024 preview event at the Grand Canyon. And I've already talked to a few people on the team, but I have someone else here to kind of talk about careers and activities in Flight Sim 2024. So if you can introduce, introduce yourself, please. <laughs> Hello, I'm David Deden. I'm creative director at Azobo Studio. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk to me. Now, the biggest question that I'm sure a lot of people had when they announced Flight Sim 2024, what do you mean activities and careers? Why, why, don't I just fly the plane? What, what do you mean? So kind of, let's start with careers first. What, what is a career in Flight Sim 2024 and why should someone jumping into the series care about that? Huh, interesting question. I think if you are a hardcore simmer or on the other side of the spectrum, mm -hmm. if you're just, like, you're just interested in flying and yeah. you never did any flight sim before, yeah. uh, uh, career will gonna be the, 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 the deepest type of game uh, experience you will have with flight sim, which basically will take you by the end uh, uh, as you, if you were a rookie pilot and you will earn your wings, which basically mean train for exams, or if you don't need to be, to be trained, you, will, you can go directly to exams. Yeah. And thanks to those exams, we, you will unlock new type of planes you can pilot. And those type of planes come, with those type of planes comes um, different types of jobs you can do with these planes. And you will gonna be able then to explore all of the different types of aviation career uh, someone can do in real life. And so it's a sort of exploration of the planet, but also an exploration of all the different sort of flight you can do and, and with, this, with their very specificity type of things. For example, you can do the classic passenger flight yeah. where you will basically bring people from a point A to, uh, from a point, a to a point B, or you can do um, I, um, agricultural uh, aviation where you will gonna have to spray uh, fertilizer on the, on the field, which is a completely different sort of skill because in this case, it's really su actually super radical. You need to be really skilled at piloting in order to, be, to fly l as low as possible uh, on a very uh, tight uh, area, be careful with the trees, uh, with the power lines, extra, extra, and come yeah. back. And this happens in the middle of the countryside, you know? So it's a completely different flavor than uh, taking off from Seattle and go to, for example, whatever, Los Angeles, yeah. uh, with a huge airliner uh, where, you, where it's completely something else that will gonna be um, uh, requested in order to accomplish this type of flight, with managing uh, everything in the uh, avionics of the airplane and the flight paths, the ATC, et cetera, et cetera. So, those two examples, just to give you a sort of uh, the range uh, of variety you can have, uh, it's really what has driven us when we were picking the different type of activity we could take. It was really to have the larger perimeter, a larger spectrum of potential that exposed the richness of the aviation uh, world. Now, all that is fantastic, and, and I love that this is being added to the game because I do, I do think it'll give people a different perspective on it. And I also think it will help people that are looking at flight sim. That's the simulator thing, and i got to buy all this equipment. I'm not sure if I want to do that. Kind of ease them into and help learn about what aviation is all about. So all that sounds great to me. Now, one question I had for you is with the careers, if I understand this correctly, I can start my career anywhere. And from any location in the world, essentially, is, is that correct? It's absolutely, absolutely correct, and it's magic. You know, in the 2020 uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, one of the first thing everyone was doing was basically starting to fly upon his house, or uh, <laughs> Me, yeah. everyone does, does yeah. that. Uh, it's a little bit in the same vein here. Is that it's so cool to actually start your career. Exactly like if in real life you would go to the closest airport and ask, "Hello guys, I want to do. I want to be a pilot. Right. So give me lessons. I want." Uh, it's it has this exact <coughs> favor, and it really adds to the experience because you feel much more connected because you start your your first flight and yeah you're close to your school or you know the stadium you were used to go or your house extra extra extra. So it's so cool. But you can also start in a very remote place somewhere you never went. And it's, it will give you a completely different perspective and flavor in, 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 in this path, yeah. 
question that just popped in my head yeah. as you, you said that, because I, I'm just thinking where I even live, there's like a small airport right yeah. there. So I, and I even, when I was playing earlier, I took off from there. But to your point about going through the career and I can upgrade and start getting more planes. And let's say I get to the point where I am able to fly a 737 or something like that. My small airport can't support a 737. So how, do, so how does that work in the game as far as from a career standpoint? Now that I am actually able to fly these bigger planes, do you just simply migrate to a bigger airport or, or Good what? Good question. Actually, you, we have a sort of, uh, like as we call it in video game, a sort of fog of war, you know? So basically, mm -hmm. it's the area of influence uh, your, you as a pilot as, as a professional. Mm -hmm. So you start on a given spot and because you are a professional, you start to know people around in the area. Uh -huh. And the more you, f you, you fly, the more you know more people which are, poten which are potential clients. So basically, uh, uh, let's start, let's, let's say uh, I start in Lille, which is my uh, hometown mm -hmm. in, in the north of France. Uh, I will make a flight to, let's say, Bordeaux. And then in Bordeaux, I will unlock new potential clients and so on. And depending uh, in those area you you've, uh, basically have discovered or unlocked, I would say, um, it, this principle expands to the whole planet. And so if at some point you make a flight to Indonesia, yeah. suddenly you will have another potential hub of mi uh, available mission in, in, the, in the Indonesia, which will going to be related to the specification and type of job you can do. And each time you unlock a new specification, you can uh, do the, the, the new type of activity. You can do it in any single spot you have already unlocked. Wow, that, that's pretty impressive. I, I love that. Now, another question I have, and this you've already kind of essentially already talked about the activities. Um, I don't know if you want to go in more depth beyond that, but a question I had is like, okay, there's a certain activity that I want to do. And even in the presentation, it does seem like these activities are weather and time of day specific for certain ones. If I'm playing, and, and I know Flight Sim, and I'm assuming 2024 also is going to continue to have a, a live weather up you know, sure. map. So when it comes to doing these careers and these activities, will you be able to simulate time of day, certain types of weather to be able to complete activity or you got to be there when real time when it needs to happen, if, if that makes sense. It makes sense. Um, to keep it simple, let's say that first, I mean, in order to keep the world as lively as possible, we mm -hmm. try to keep the real time weather. Yeah. But let's pretend you want to play at home and you know most of us we have a work a work exactly. so you yeah. come back home and if you want to play in your, the area you leave uh, if it's at night there is basically no flight at night mm -hmm. I mean for most of those types right. of activity so you can change the, the time of the day but you will still have the real time weather which is cool because the real time weather is much more rich than the presets you know so uh, yeah it will be uh, so let's pretend we are the 10th of September. Uh, you will gonna have on a given spot the weather you have on the 10th, 10th of September, but you can change the time of the day and keep the weather as it is, but change the position of the sun, basically. So which allows you to uh, do your career uh, with the best lively world possible, yeah. but without constraining you to play somewhere else than where you live. <laughs> so essentially, you have a 24-hour window exactly. to be able to do that. Yeah, that makes makes total sense. Now, I believe you were saying this during the presentation, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's activities that you can miss if you don't do them in a timely manner. They will basically move on without you. Um, not, I would say not activity that you would miss, but a mission that you would miss. Um, okay, yeah. okay. Maybe yes. just to be precise, yeah. it's because the reason why I'm, 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 I'm saying this is because the next day you will probably have the same amount of potential jobs you can do on a given uh, type of mission, mm -hmm. but it, they will going to be different. Okay. And even a mission you will going to play, as soon as you finish it, you will never see it again. It's gone. Right. Which is cool, because actually every single mission is unique, and as in real life, you know, we, so, except obviously if you do Paris-New York, New York-Paris, Paris-New York, and you right. always do the same flight. But that said, the passenger in the plane will going to be different gotcha. each time, you know, there is some sort of randomness, and the weather will going to be different, extra, extra. But the guy who, who you have saved 
who was uh, stranded into the mountain and that you hoist with your helicopter the yeah. next day, you will never see him again. Right, you know right, I mean? yeah. So, which is cool, yeah. Yeah, I, excellent. So, <laughs> along those lines, and I'm trying to think of the best way to ask this, do you know a, the set number of activities that are currently in the game? And if so, are there plans to continue to expand that as, as time goes on? Right now it's 16. Okay. We have much more in the pocket. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and we will see. <laughs> okay, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. So what is your expectation? Because obviously this is something you've been working on for, for a while. Um, as players get their hands on it, what is the expectation from you or, or just the team in general of what you hope players can accomplish with these careers and activities? Good question. Um, I can actually, to answer the question, it's what pleased me the most recently is like in the company, you know, there is as many opinion in the company that you could find in the community. We sh it should work like this or like this. Sometimes we disagree, etc. And And some of the people don't realize how efficient the career will going to be to actually um, um, uh, build your uh, skills and competencies in aviation. And I received uh, uh, a message recently from one of the designers saying, you know what, it's crazy. I didn't thought, even if he was participating to the design of the, it's like I played the career and I realized that I'm much, much better than I would have ever thought I would be without even realizing it. And it's the best uh, yeah. thing that could happen. It's like step by step, like basically, you know, like most of the video games are doing most of the time, they are basically giving you the content in order to be better and better uh, step by step. And part of the objective, it's not the only one, but the, it, it was one of the objectives we had in mind is to, you know, because who starts an experience and say, oh, let's do 65 tutorials before <laughs> I even play. Right, who right. does that? Nobody. Yeah. It was existing. I mean, part of them were already existing. But now, it's on demand on a given spot of the career, and you mm. feel like an actual experiential thing. You know, it's like like in real life. Oh my God, how a, a tail dragger works, really. Yeah. Uh, I think I can do the exam without the without the training. Okay, let's see. <laughs> yeah. If it doesn't work, okay, I will train a bit. Yeah. Uh, extra, extra, and I think. It makes the flow much more natural. You go to it much more naturally, and you will soon realize that suddenly, okay, I got it. For example, ATC is another good example. Uh, you can do the ATC by yourself, like requesting uh, on way, take off, extra by yourself, asking by yourself, uh, uh, and by using the ATC interface. Or you can just push a button to actually trigger the uh, expected, I would say, uh, uh, request. Or like, okay, copy, I have this. And it's funny because I'm not very good at this, you know, yeah. personally. And it's funny because playing at the carrier, step by step, you get used to it. And you're like, yeah, it, it, I'm in my flow. I exactly know how it works, finally. So it's another way of saying it is that you are doing it because you need to talk to the ATC because otherwise it would not, it would not have been realistic. But there is a sort of push button to, to you know, just to make the thing happen, uh, which step by step makes you comfortable with the principle, the, the logic behind the aviation system. And as soon as you're ready to do it by yourself, boom, you can do it by yourself and do it for real. You know what I mean? Which is super cool. Okay. And all of those little tiny things, it was just example, step by step really makes you better at flight simming and you become more and more comfortable with planes and different type of planes and helicopter extra. And yeah, I think it's cool because people will discover that it's, I, I mean, people who don't already know will realize that aviation is super rich and super wide. Um, and people who already know, I think will find a awesome uh, sandbox uh, uh, with the carrier. Yeah. yeah, so it'll be educational in a way. Yeah. I have two final questions and I asked this one first uh, about, again, going about career. Is there an end game to, to the career mode, like a finality to the career mode. And if there is, are we, are, will there be mechanisms in place to be able to display that to the community that you've completed the career? Hmm. Excellent question. First time today, um, I like I, it. I, I try. 
if you do the math based on the numbers I've given, there is no ending, almost. Okay. I mean, probably not in the lifespan. Like, at, I mean, it, it, maybe if we find some medicines to, to yeah. get older, yeah. I don't know. But, you know, two million mission, it's, it's just a crazy. It's a crazy number. Again, the goal here is not to give you to force you to do all those, all of those 20 million mission or uh, 20, sorry, um, 2 million mission. Yeah. And again, it's 2 million right now, but we are still adjusting some stuff. It might be 4, you know, so we'll see. But it's at least 2 million. Um, if you think about it, even the, just this number, is you, you will not be able to do all of them. But let's, for example, say that you focus only on the one type of... Uh, type of carrier like I want to be an airliner pilot so basically you you go directly to the on the certification tree to I want to be an airliner pilot and you're actually an employee as an airliner pilot then the next thing is like as you as you are you are earning money you can at some point be your own boss yeah. and buy your own airplane probably it will be too expensive at the beginning and you will have to buy a second hand airliner uh, which will probably could which will cost you less when you will buy it but it will cost you more in terms of maintenance right and step by step it's it's one pin, and then you will buy two and then three and you will have your installed based of planes of a fleet basically on every given place on the planet so technically you can buy 100 1000 plane airliners and put it and put and put and and, and have your fleet dispatch all over the planet so yeah, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's huge. There is no real end except maybe I would say what I would consider personally as a designer as the end of the... It's like if you have all the certification, all the specialization, that you have a grade S in terms of reputation and that you've basically uh, explored the whole planet, like the stomp system, you know, the yeah. fog of war thing mm -hmm. is on, on the whole planet. It's the beginning of something where you can tell, I think I, I, I've done most of it. But still, you have the beginning, you know? Yeah, yeah. So you get the point. Yeah. No, excellent. And you actually, and I know we don't have enough time, but you opened up a whole nother land of questions I have <laughs> about the economy of the game. Because you're talking about the fleets and just the maintenance and fuel, like yeah. all, all these things that will be a part of the simulation that is Flight Sim 2024, which is very exciting. But I will end on this question. So going back to activities, and we're just talking about the community, and we know how big the community has been since Flight Sim 2020 and how it is just steadily grown over, over these years and i'm sure it's going to be even bigger now with 2024 but with activities you said there's 16 right will there could there possibly be opportunities for community created activities in the game of course at some point it will come not for launch but we are talking a lot about this with yeah. designer and with your uh it's something we want to do but it's a little bit like it's always the same thing you know you need first to to get know, out the door to, to, yeah, to, start, to know yeah. what you're doing for yeah, real yeah. And, mm -hmm. and then we will come with a user friendly editor that yeah. will make this uh, that will expose all the different type of functionality we, we, we have but you know technically what your mission designers I mean system designers are doing they are already using tools so we are not that far to be able to do it it's just that to make it smooth and user friendly really makes sense uh, it will take a little bit of time and I don't know if we will release this uh, in the near future, but uh, for sure, for launch, we will not have this. No, but, but it's, it's, let's say it's in home mind. Yeah, to the point that the team is talking about it, because that was my immediate thought. Okay, you're going to put this out, and people are they're going to immediately consume that content and go, I want more. And if the community is given those tools to help with that, it'll be I fantastic. I think what it will bring for real, because as I was saying uh, previously, it's we have worked a lot to make the mission as varied as possible, taking into account the what we call the world awareness. It's like in which spot on the planet we are, what are the type of, what are the most common names, you know? Um, what is the type of people, uh, type of what, blah, 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 all those things. And is, is there a ski station in the area? It, because it informs the type of scenario. Is there right. a field? Because right. if there is no field, there is no crop dusting, you know, right. blah, blah, all those things makes by default, I think, the mission quite valid. And I'm, I'm still surprised myself sometimes. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh my God, it's crazy. That said, what this 
generative system cannot do is go into very specific things which are sometimes super charming mm -hmm. about actual activities that exist or actual scenario that exist. Uh, and, and for sure, one day, community will be able to bring this. Because we all have in mind, so I would be so cool if I would have to take, uh, I don't know, do an helicopter. We talk, ex the example we are taking with uh, Jorg. If you talk about Junkanoo Festival, with Jorg, you will see, he will smile. <laughs> <laughs> because it's uh, the example where, you know, it's not a very well-known festival, except if you live in the Bahamas. And, and obviously, the game cannot invent this sort of cultural, really cultural, uh, very hyper local type of uh, thing. But community can do this. And suddenly, you can do, uh, you can go somewhere and, uh, oh my gosh, it's incredible. I would not, ev I, would, I, would, I could not imagine that the game would have known even that this festival exists, you know? And for this sort of things, community will bring something great. So, yeah, we, we it's, it's, I would not say it's in the pocket because it's not ready, uh, but in, it's in our mind and, and since the beginning. So it will come someday. Right. It's not a no. <laughs> I think that's what people want to hear. So that's great. Well, again, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk to me. I'm, I'm excited to go play more later today, and uh, I think people are going to be really excited in November to play this game. You know, it's a pleasure for us, too, because we are in whole cave uh, doing the game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we're meeting with real people and, and people who really enjoy the, 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 the sim is always great. So thank you. Yeah, thank you.